start the video. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to leave a message, please do. If you want to share this video to friends, family, work colleagues, or anyone else, then please feel free to do so. And please subscribe to the channel. That way, as per with all the videos, you can keep up to date with any new tutor tutorials, all the latest videos, and all the latest information that are coming onto this channel. Now, with that being said, let's get on with the presentation for Juniper Aggregated Ethernet and how to configure it. Welcome to this presentation on aggregated Ethernet interfaces in a Juniper Junos environment and CLI interface. So the first thing we have to look at and we have to view is what is aggregated Ethernet? Well, as per a lot of other systems, aggregated Ethernet is the bonding of two or more physical ports to a virtual port. And why would we use it? Well, <clears throat> we'd use aggregated Ethernet when we wanted redundancy or increased bandwidth. And when would we use it? Well, most of the time we tend to use two or more physical ports when we want to connect upstream to another switch or a core device or possibly a VM system. If it's to a core device, the chances are you'll probably have aggregated Ethernet in both directions, downstream and upstream. So for this actual lesson, which is going to be a very quick lesson, we're going to utilize the following topology, as you can see. So from previous lessons, we'll continue with the tutorial VMX and tutorial one VMX, and we'll configure up the physical interfaces of GE006 and GE007 on both devices. And we're going to give them a four slash 30 subnet in the 100 range. So the class C of 192.168.100.1 and dot two. And the aggregated Ethernet channel is going to be AE0 and the dot zero is the unit zero. So let's get on with the configuration and show you how this is utilized. So here we are at the configuration screen. We're using two times VMX running on EVENG, which in turn is running on our version of VMware Workstation Pro. You can find the actual links for these two applications in the description below this video. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to create an aggregated Ethernet interface and see it in operation. Now, the first thing we have to do before we can actually configure the ports is we have to tell the system how many aggregated Ethernet devices we'll be using. Now, to do this, we go into edit mode. Again, as always, it can be edit, configure, configure private, configure exclusive. But for the demonstrations of this tutorial, we're just going to go into edit mode. So when we mentioned Ethernet devices, what exactly do we mean by that? Well, what we're actually saying is how many ports are we going to use? In the case of this tutorial, we're only going to be putting two ports in. So theoretically, we could just put the device count as two. However, it's important to remember that the device count as a minimum must be equal to what you're going to use, or it can be greater. From a practice perspective and in any live environment, it's a good idea to always put as many as you can. The reason for this is you do not have to go back and change this configuration setting at a later date. You've already taken into consideration that you may want to add more aggregated Ethernet ports or interfaces to this actual system. But for the purposes of this actual tutorial, we'll just set it as two. From edit mode, we simply type set chassis aggregated devices ethernet and a device count and if we put a question mark how many do we want to actually add as we've stated 
for this tutorial, we're just going to put in here two, but you may want to put in 30, 40, just depends on the number of um, aggregated ports that you want to set up or configure at a later date. So we're just going to put in here, actually I'll put in four. I'm going to put in a device count of four. So what we'll do is we'll go to tutorial one and we'll do exactly the same again. So we're going to edit mode because we need to do it on all the devices. And we will set chassis, aggregated devices, ethernet is what we're after and a device count of four. Let's commit that on both of these systems so that we have that from the candidate to the active. Now we're going to need to move on to configure our physical ports to be part of an aggregated group. Now before we do that, what I want to do is quickly show you the interface listing, so our interface terse command, and see if we actually have any aggregated interfaces within that list. So let's do a run show interfaces terse and see if we've got any. We have none in this section and we have none in this section and that's because your aggregated Ethernet interfaces will not show up until they're actually configured. Now let's configure up our two interfaces. So we'll give it a description as well. So we do set interfaces G-006 and we'll put a description as, let's put it as group AE0 so that we know that it belongs to the A E0 virtual interface or aggregated Ethernet interface. And if we use the up arrow, we'll do this with seven as well. So we've got both of them descripted into group AE0. Now what we have to do, let's use the arrow twice and we'll delete back to the interface here. And we need to put in there our gig ether options. So if we put in our gig ether options and we're going to do an 802.3 AD and then the actual aggregated group. So we're going to do AE0. It's as simple as that. And we'll do this with seven as well. So let's put this in for seven. Now it's what we're going to do is we're going to commit it at this point. But it is very, very important to remember and to understand that all configuration work, exactly the same as a link aggregated group, okay, or a lag, must be done on the virtual interface itself, not on the physical interfaces. Because what will happen is if you do it on a physical interface, one end, it'll drop the link completely. Okay, so with that being said, We've now configured this, so let's configure the AE. Well, in fact, actually, let's have a look again and just confirm that we have. We may not have it yet until we've put an actual IP address in, but we'll have a look and see if we have AE0 on there yet. And currently, at the moment, we don't, but we will have once we have configured the IP address. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do set interfaces. AE0 unit 0 family INET address 192.168.100.1 forward slash 30 and we'll do a commit check and we'll commit this and we will again use the up arrow and we'll have a look at the show interfaces terse and you'll notice that we now have AE0. Now there is a better way to see that quicker with interfaces terse is we can use the wildcard command the same as if you're doing something in a Windows CLI or a Linux CLI. So we can actually put in there AE star 
and that will list every interface that begins with AE. Okay, it doesn't list all the interfaces, only those. So for example, we could do GE and it'd list all the GE ones, but the one we're interested in here is AE0. So let's go to our secondary VMX, which is tutorial one, and we'll do a set interfaces G-006 and we'll give it a description as we did before group AE0 and we'll do that with seven as well and using the up arrow again we'll delete back to the six and we want the gig ether options which is 802.3 AD AE0 and we're going to do that with seven as well. Up arrow, go back to the six, replace it with the seven. And that's the two ports set up. We're going to commit this. Now we can set interfaces A, E, zero, unit zero, family, INET address. And we put the opposing address for the 30, which is going to be dot two. So it's 192.168.100.2 forward slash 30 and we can commit that and what we'll do is again on here we'll do run show interfaces terse and we'll just do an ae star and we have the interface up so we should actually now be able to ping dot one so if we do a ping sorry because we're in configuration mode we have to do a run ping 192.168.100.1 and we have a response back from it now we have to look at the AE0 interface to show so because it's a virtual MX we've only got the uh, gig ether interfaces at the moment so they're only gigabit so we should have two gig two gig throughput so let's have a look at run show interfaces a a e zero and let's have a look at what we've got in here so we've got a speed of two gig two gigabits per second now if we want to see what ports are actually housed within this virtual interface what we do is we have to use the extensive command so we utilize the extensive and within here again we see the two gig. We see everything here is enabled and the physical links are up. We can see quite a lot of information on here. Um, the actual interfaces that, or the information we're interested in are the links. So here we have the links. We see them GE006 and 007. So let's go back to the other tutorial VMX. And we'll do the same here. Run show interface AE0. And we'll use the extensive option. And again, we've got a speed of 2 gig. And we show as the links are here that are included within that. So let's take a look at what actually happens if we disable an interface because we should actually see this interface drop, the physical interface that is, and the speed should go down to one gigabits per second. So let's have a look and see what actually happens. So to disable the interface, which is the equivalent of the Cisco shutdown command, because this is in uh, an aggregated group, we can't simply do unit zero. It just will not accept it. So we have to do it to just the physical interface itself. So we do set. Let's do it on GE006. GE-006. And we simply disable it. So let's do a commit check. And it succeeds. So let's do a commit. Okay. So let's do a run show interface AE0 extensive. 
And now you'll notice that the interface is still up, the virtual interface, but we're down to one gig because we've disabled one of the ports. We've we've made it simulate that we've dropped a link. There's been a fault. And this is how the redundancy works within these aggregated Ethernet interfaces, the same as uh, a link aggregated group. So if we have a look further down, we'll see down here that actually GE006 is shown as down within the actual group. Okay, and this is how the aggregated Ethernet work and how they function. Let's put it back up again. Let's enable it again and ensure that it comes back. So set interfaces, sorry, delete interfaces GE-006 disable. So we remove that. We do a commit check and we commit that. And now if we use the up arrow, we'll go back to having a look at the AE0 extensive and you'll notice we're back to two gig again. And if we go further down, you'll notice that the down marker has gone. It sees it as back again. Okay, so if there's any questions with regards to this tutorial, then please let me know. Otherwise, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hope to see you with more lessons or tutorials in the future. Thanks. Bye.